out to get a pack of cigarettes, but I left my wallet at home. Yeah, that's me. I'm getting old. My name is Sonny, Sonny Featherland, an investigator for 20 years, and once the star of the predatory division of the Clawville Police Department, one half of the legendary Chicken Police. But buying a pack of smokes is more than I can handle right now. Maybe I should just lay low. Yeah, I'll do that. The most colorful place in the wilderness. For all the gods, what bullshit. The last clucking color left this city years ago. And slowly I'll turn gray too. Still, what do I expect? We're living in a vast experiment and don't even notice that everything got clucked up a long time ago. We believe in this wonderland of peaceful coexistence. Wolves and sheep, chickens and hounds. Yeah, sure, why not? It's just ridiculous. The dog eats the chicken. It's in our nature. I'm not propping up the illusion anymore. 121 days, and it's over. Retirement. What could possibly go wrong? Office lock is a piece of shit if a dame can pick it. She stood in the darkness. The light painted stripes on her body. It whispered secret little things that were never there in the first place. But she was no zebra. Reality was just a light switch away. Elizabeth or Charlotte? I was sure she'd have a sophisticated sounding name. She had a bygone look in her eyes older than this ancient building and perhaps the whole city itself or maybe i'm just drunk but she was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time so i had to give her a chance
My wallet and my badge. The wallet is real, the badge ain't. Chief Bloodboil took mine, so I got this one out of a pack of cornflakes, just in case. My last cigarette. <laughs> You're lucky I don't have a light, pal. She doesn't seem so dangerous that I need to grab my gun, but you never know. Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. My wife took all the good ones. She knew they'd only gathered dust here, and she was right. My wife took all the good ones. I promised myself I'd write a novel one day. I can't even remember the last time I used this. Maybe I'm really gonna write that novel, if I make it to retirement alive, of course. Maybe I'm really... Every whiskey has the same color nowadays, at least in this price range. Murky brown swill. I should improve my standards. Murky... This is... Uh, this is one of the most beautiful memories from my old life, before Molly left me and took our daughter. Molly, where do you live now? And with whom? Molly, the good things in life don't last long. The best ones always leave first. I saw that in the window of a shoe store. I never understood it, or what it had to do with shoes. It seems like a different life. Oh, my God, I'm becoming a sappy little chick. It seems... M.B. Davis, the eternal king of jazz. The photo is from the days of jazz prohibition. I only heard the old man live one time, but I'll never forget that night. And not only because I woke up at the harbor without my gun, my badge, and my pants. He was a genius. Some say he's now a recluse, living on the outskirts of the city. But others say he's in an insane asylum after he chewed his own leg off. He was a genius. We used to be star cops a few years ago. Tabloid press, radio interviews, and even a book series. I don't miss those days. Of course, Marty, my old partner, would disagree. He just loved the spotlight. God damn, what an embarrassing headline. The Wild Gentleman. Those guys rebuilt the city after the great fire of 867. My heroes when I was a little chick. I'm starting to think they should have left Clawville as it was, burned to the ground. If only I were half as gutsy as these guys. Maybe in another life, in another story. I don't even know where the key is. Whatever's inside is gonna stay there forever. Just a bunch of useless crap in there. Just a bunch. I don't even know what these papers are. I need a secretary. I need a I don't see colors anymore, only emptiness. Everything faded. I need another drink. Maybe I'm just old, 
And while I'm clucking about nothing ever changing, everything changes. <laughs> You've gone out of style, old bird. Accept it and move on. Of all that's furry, I should be doing something. But I just stare out the window like a feather-brained fool. Pull yourself together, Sonny. Behind that door lies the kingdom of dirty clothes, cigarette butts, and empty bottles. My bedroom, sort of. Nothing interesting in there, but if there is, it'll remain hidden for all eternity. Nothing in of all that's Who is this dame, anyway? And what the cluck is she doing in my apartment on New Year's Eve? Legs that go on for days. Deep, dark eyes. Silky skin and voice. You're in big trouble, pal. Let me introduce myself. My name is Deborah, Miss Deborah Ibanez. You're mistaken, ma'am. Oh, really? Please enlighten me, Mr. Featherland. I'm not a private eye. I'd recommend Philip... M oh, I mean, Mr. Philmar Lowe instead of me. He's a nice guy. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. Not even from a classy dame like you. Am I that easy to read? That's my job. But tell me, since you've invited yourself in, would you like a drink? I don't... I don't usually drink. Well, I've got to have one. And it'd be rude of me to drink alone. So, maybe some sherry? If you insist. But bourbon, please. Ah, thank the wild ones. That's all I have. What a coincidence. So come on, spill it from the beginning. I need a secretary. Legs that go... That's better. Now, if I understand correctly, your mistress is receiving threats. What kind of threats, exactly? It's a very strange matter. First, there were letters. Then it came printed on a wine bottle's label, sent as a gift. Then carved into a brick, thrown through the window. And finally, they painted it on the wall of the house in giant red letters. I think it's time to dig a little deeper. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you some routine questions. Please, that's why I'm here.
So, this is the part where the interrogation comes. Like in those detective movies. Something like that, Deborah. Yes. So... Something like... Must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I could scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. You're not very confident. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Excuse me. I'm just a bit nervous. I've never done anything like this before. Breaking into the apartments of strangers isn't that big a deal. Some people do it as a hobby. Please don't make fun of me, Mr. Featherland. This is hard for me as it is. You're right. Sorry. Did you come alone? All by yourself? I took the subway, then the tram, and then I walked. It wasn't easy to find this place. And to be honest, I had to be discreet. Yeah, well, I think I'm starting to get the picture. This is quite unpleasant for me. Do you even know what you want? I... I'm very sorry, Mr. Featherland. I thought... What? You come in here, swaying your lovely hips like some kind of femme fatale. Make me have a drink with you, and expect me to believe everything you say? I'm making you drink? Well, okay, sweetheart. You had no hand in that. I'm sorry I wasted your time, Mr. Featherland. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately, only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages, and everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. I'm sure it's not intentional, but uh, are you toying with me? I'm not sure I understand you, Mr. Featherland. Cut the crap, Deborah. You're a pretty smart girl, and you can't hide that no matter how hard you try. 
But ever since we've been talking, I couldn't force one single straight answer out of you. I'm starting to think I'm terrible at what I do. I'm sorry, Mr. Featherland, you're right. I'll try to be more straightforward next time. I appreciate that, ma'am. This is just too risky for me. I can't take the case. Please, think again, Mr. Featherland, and let's discuss it. It's a matter of life and death. <sighs> Are you in some sort of jam? Nothing of the sort. There are simply things better left unsaid. Then you're wasting my time. I trust your instincts. You'll manage it. Yeah, and I have no other choice, right? To be honest, no, Mr. Featherland. Not really. Have you ever felt truly vulnerable? Honestly, very often, Mr. Featherland. Great, because that's exactly how I feel right now, Deborah. I'm sorry if it's too unpleasant for you, but we had no one else to turn to. You know, I get that a lot, and it never ends well. Do you like happy endings? Not in books or movies, but in real life it would be nice for a change. But this is Clawville. Not many happy endings around here. I knew you were romantic at heart. If what's between me and my whiskey could be called romance, then yes, maybe a little. Tell me, Deborah, why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. <laughs> Smart answer. Be honest and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him. Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler, this little piece of the puzzle changes everything. Must be cautious and smart. This dame seems shy, which I can use to my advantage. But I must be careful about what I say to her, or I could scare her off. Let's start gently, and when the time comes, we can go in hard. Who exactly are you, ma'am? I'm... I'm not somebody important, Mr. Featherland. You're important enough to deal with such a delicate matter, right? I carry out the wishes of my employer, nothing more. This means simple paperwork, most of the time. You've been thrown into deep water, sweetheart. Tell me, can you even swim? Believe me, this is just as unpleasant for me as it is for you, if not even more. Tell me, which part of the city do you live in? Calavera Hills? Flowerville, maybe. Look, I... I don't want to answer that. I'm here on behalf of my employer, and not on personal business. Fair point, Deborah. Let's try a different approach.
Why did you have to visit me this particular evening? I have my reasons. I may look like a silly little fawn, and maybe I am, but I still have common sense. I don't doubt that for a second, Miss Ibanez. This day is essential to my mistress, and she thought it's also important to you. A message in itself, for sure. But to be honest, even you are. You know what? I'll just take that as a compliment, even if it wasn't meant as such. Why did you come to visit me? Why not your employer herself? My employer is Miss Natasha Katsenko. She hasn't been leaving her home lately. Only if she really has to. How so? Miss Natasha is afraid. She's scared because of those unwanted messages. And everyone knows who she is. So she's that kind of woman. I don't know what you mean. Of course you do, Deborah. Thank you, by the way. We're finally getting somewhere. We avoided the point long enough. Deborah's hiding something, no question. Let's focus on that. What do you want from me? Me? Oh, don't be silly, Deborah. I mean your employer. I was just talking to myself, out loud. Well, Miss Katsenko thinks you're a great detective, and you're also reliable. That's why I came. Did she also give you the lockpick? Please, could you let this go? I'm really embarrassed. Sorry, sweetheart, I'm just teasing you. As soon as I saw you, you were forgiven. That's... that's very nice of you. It has nothing to do with being nice, Deborah, but you're welcome. Don't you think this whole thing is a little suspicious? Look, Santino, I'll explain everything. I have no doubt about that. You look just the type, sweetheart. No offense. I'll take that as a compliment. Or maybe I'll act like I haven't heard it. You see, we're starting to understand each other. Tell me, Deborah. Why should I believe you at all? Because my mistress trusts you. Should that be enough? If you really like what she thinks you are, then yes. Damn, what can I say to that? Look, I didn't mean to back you up against the wall. You have a way with words, sweetheart. Did you ever want to be a cop? No, not for the world. Heh, <laughs> smart answer. Be honest, and tell me what you're so afraid of. You know, Mr. Featherland, my mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler. Or as most people know him... Ibn Wessler, the Kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. So you get it now. The secrecy. To put it mildly, I think I understand it all. Wessler. This little piece of the puzzle changes everything.
legs that... Why don't you take it to the police? Just go there and file a report. Photos, flashing lights, fingerprints, you know the drill. The evidence is very clear. Even a moderately talented detective could easily wrap this case up. Or just try the phone. Triple five, triple one. Please, take a look at this. Well, okay. Let's see. I know Molly very well. Please note this when deciding whether or not to accept my assignment. Miss Ibanez is a trusted friend. Treat her as gentleman. N. I know. I felt like I'd been hit on the back of my head with a blackjack. Reality tilted. Molly. Good gods. What was her name doing there? I glanced at the opposite wall with the well-worn picture frames. Like an eternally dark hole in the wall. A missing piece. She was wearing a light silk dress and singing a lullaby. The waves caressing her beautiful long legs. Why Molly? Why now? Mr. Featherland? Santino, are you all right? What the hell is this supposed to mean? I don't know anything, Mr. Santino. My mistress told me to give this to you. She said you'd understand. Don't you? Oh, of course I understand, Miss Ibanez. I get it very well. But this case is becoming more and more confusing. It's starting to look like blackmail. Blackmail? Don't play innocent with me. But... All right. When can I visit? Visit? Me? Not you. Miss Katsenko. Oh, yes. You can find her at the Tsar Club. Didn't you tell me she's not the social kind? That she's especially unsociable? Or does she only like loud and crowded clubs? No, she's really not like that. But she owns the place. Judging by the flyer, it must be a very busy club. Especially on New Year's Eve, right? I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding Miss Katsenko. But there's one small problem, Mr. Featherland. Let me guess. Mr. Wessler better not know about my visit. Exactly. How did you know? Twenty years experience, ma'am. Oh, and please, call me Sonny. It was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. I mean, Sonny. I'll talk about the rest with Ms. Katsenko in person. A good friend of mine would be happy to take you home if you'd like. I'd appreciate that, Sonny.
you again, Mr. Feather. I mean, Sonny. Don't mention it, Deborah. I had no other plans for today, except drink. But tell me, do you have a light? I'm sorry, I, I don't smoke. Thought so. Hey, Lewis. Am I bothering you? No. No, no, no. Of course not, Sonny. O old friend, what's up? Could you come over? I've got a favor to ask if you're not busy. For, for you, anything. Just a minute. Lewis arrived a few minutes later. He lived in the rooms above, so it wasn't difficult getting here. Not to mention that he's a rabbit. It was a quick hop. The Atlas Hotel was his inheritance. It was once a well-renowned place, but not anymore. The last economic crisis ruined it. And now, besides me, he was the only resident of this enormous place. Could I ask you a few more questions, Deborah? Feel free, Sonny. So, Ibn Wessler, eh? You know you could have dropped the bomb a little earlier. If I started with that, I'm sure he would have thrown me out. You're right. He's one of the most dangerous gangsters in the city. I only know he's an influential businessman. Isn't that the same? Not even you can see the world as that black and white. I've already told you more about myself than I wanted to. Afraid you'll get your hands dirty? I'm afraid I already did. Do you think my whereabouts aren't a secret? Do you think they ever were? Well, I was hoping. Clawville is a big city, but not so big that Santino Featherland can hide in it. Oh, please, flatter me more. Sonny, I've already told you what I know. I've never read the message. My job was to give it to you and nothing more. You really are this innocent, aren't you? I'm not sure I get what you mean. Let me give you some advice, sister. Leave the city and get as far as you can from the likes of Ibn Wesler. It's not so simple, Mr. Featherland. My mistress needs me. Is she really that important to you? That you drive around in the dead of night? to questionable places, to deliver messages you know absolutely nothing about. I would do more than that for her. I see. You're smooth. Real smooth. Thank you, Mr. Featherland. Sonny, please. Just Sonny. So this Natasha dame... Look, I'm just the messenger. You have to talk to my mistress about the details. Miss Katsenko was very clear on this matter. I see, but... Please, Sonny, let's not make this even more uncomfortable. Okay, understood. Let's drop it. Thank you.
the good old rabbit. I can always count on him, even on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I hope the old bunny had nothing important to do. <laughs> Thanks for being so quick, Lewis. Can you drive Miss Ibanez home? I have some things to take care of. Of course, Sonny. You know anything for you. Thank you for being so considerate, Sonny. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Goodbye, then. So long, Deborah. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. I can always count on you. Thanks, old buddy. D -d 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 Don't even mention it, my friend. You got anything planned for today? I thought I'd visit a nightclub. It's n n n New Year's Eve, after all. Well, I didn't mean to hold you up. I'll a a ask a favor of you someday. <laughs> I owe you a lot of those, don't I? That, 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 that's true. I, I, I don't deny it. I can always count on you. Oh, just uh, one more thing. Yes, Sonny? I don't want to sound indiscreet, but uh, this um, fur removal craze. Uh, do, you, uh, do you do this yourself, or are there specific parlors for it? Uh, well... Would you like to try it? Well, it wouldn't work as well with my feathers. Just professional curiosity. You know, it's, uh, yeah. Occupational hazard? There are parlors, yes. But I do it for myself. And I do it for my mistress, too, if you're interested. That's, uh, uh good to know. Uh, thank you very much. You're one strange bird, Sunny Featherland. Well, I've been called worse. Take care, sweetheart. You too, Sonny. Take care. You too. I can always count on... <laughs> Nothing interesting yet. driving, half drunk, risking my whole life's work. But still, it didn't feel any different. Every day was the same. And the 121 days I had left till my retirement seemed like an eternity. 
When I look out the window of the hotel room I call home, I see the same thing every day. A woman in a red nightgown dances slowly in circles to smooth music. The nine o'clock show with a glass of cheap bourbon and the red gown with the silent music. In the meantime, the proud city of Clawville is slowly eating itself alive. And we're still here, with nothing left to lose but our sanity, while others, the smart ones, had already gone. Molly. Does her name really upset me this much? All those years of solitude, and I still jump without question every time I hear it. And then there's Marty, my ex-partner, who hates me. But I know I have to speak with him, no matter what. Why do I feel like the past is watching me on this goddamn night? I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. Phyllis and Roy's, two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look, officious little shitheads, but harmless. The bullet hole in my crest is worth more than these two combined. The bullet... Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny, what you scratching out over here? I heard the big boss threw you out. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop. Just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so peckish, old bud. By the way, you're on luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? By the way, what's with the raincoats? Couldn't you find an umbrella? Why, Frank says it'll be rain. And see, that's raining. He's a frog, so he must know. Yeah, well, I'm a rooster, but I hate getting up early. Raincoats are just fine, okay. You have a problem with that, Sonny? No, just, uh, you know, the spikes sticking through and all. Is something wrong with our spikes chucking? Yeah, you know what, just forget it. Whoa, don't you freeze, boys? It's cold outside. Yeah, truth be told, I'll freeze to my bones, Sonny. Even through this jacket, I'm completely soaked. Really? I don't know why. Don't listen to him, Roy's. And you? You got nothing better to do? Bugger off. <laughs> okay, okay. Just <laughs> sometimes you two truly amaze me. What? Why are you still sneaking around here, Sonny? It always astonishes me how blockheaded you two are. What? Why are you? It always astonishes. 
a bullet hole in Back in the day, I used to patrol the city streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. If you drive a cop car in Clawville, you can do almost anything you want. Until you've got the red and blue on, nobody asks a damn thing. Maybe that's why cops are the biggest gangsters around here. If you drive a cop... This happened when that old bloodhound, Bloodboil, was promoted to chief of police. The Castilia clan thought this would frighten the old hound, but they were so wrong. Retaliation came the next morning. Raids on four warehouses, a dozen bad guys dead, and twice as many busted. Nobody messed with old Blood Boil after that, or Chief Marrowbone, as they call him around here. Could have been fixed up ages ago, but it was the Chief's explicit demand not to. They can say a lot of things about the old hound, but he's got a sense of drama for sure. Could have been fixed up. Every time this poster disappears, good old Blood Boil puts it right back, immediately. I tore it down at least three times already. Actually, it's a kind of passive-aggressive game for us with the Chief. I'm sure it's Blood Boil himself taping back the torn-off posters, like some maniac. <laughs> he must have a dozen of those things in his bag for emergencies. I'm sure it's Blood Boil himself. Did you miss me? No? Same here. We have a tough history, you and me. Maybe it's time to forget about the past, eh? We have a t It always is. Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, but if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages, and some drunk pigs in the basement. Strength, unity. <laughs> For the love of the wild gods, I'm gonna be sick. We used one of these as target practice once. Not out of disrespect, we were just too damn drunk. We used one. All it takes is one look, and my comb starts to tingle which never means anything good.
All it takes is one look. Monica Rosen, receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Soft and ordinary, but also somehow cold and distant. The kind you'd like to invite for a coffee, but you know would say no, no matter who you are or what you do. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? Every day's a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, so just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Hey, so sure, everything's fine, Mon. I'm just distracted. That's nice. Life is best if you let the adventures take you with them. <laughs> Jeez, Mon. Don't read so many romantic novels. That was one of yours, actually. From the old Sonny. You used to love saying nice little things like that, remember? I try not to. We can't erase the past because we are the past ourselves, am I right? Stop that right there. Okay, okay. I'm just joking. Yes, boss bird? Nothing. Uh, carry on. I'll, uh, I'll be fine. Just don't make a mess, okay? Yes, boss bird? Nothing. Just don't make a mess. What do you know about the Czar Club? Nothing special. I've never been there. It's a famous place, though. Expensive cigars, unaffordable drinks, pretty gals. All the movie stars and politicians go there at least once a week. And all the big-shot mobsters, too, I've heard. Yeah, I was saying the same thing. Still living in the Atlas? If something works, why change it, right? Well, if you like it there. Listen, Monica, you could, uh... Come by sometime, for a drink, or, or two, you know? I didn't hear that, and you didn't say that. Okay, got it. Sorry. Anything else, boss bird? Do we have a file on Hobart, Ibn, Wessler? Are you kidding me? We have a whole room just for him. Want the key? You can spend the remaining days of your paid holiday in there. No thanks. Never mind. You're a bit sassy today, aren't you? I'm sorry, Sonny, but I'm starting to shed my feathers because of this insane asylum. You know, New Year's Eve and Blood Boil's not here when he should be. Somehow, I'm not sorry about that. Yeah, I bet you're not, Boss Bird. Natasha Katzenko. Hmm, interesting name. Is it real or just an alias? It's supposed to be real, but who knows? Good question. We have nothing on her. She's either clean or uses a fake name. Maybe both, but I don't think so. Aside from that, everyone knows what I know about her. Singer, star, the number one babe in this town, so to speak. Thanks, little bird. It's something. Glad I could help. Yes, boss bird. Nothing. Just don't make... Marty drinks this shit. 
I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic. Today is not the day I'm gonna try this. For me, nothing beats the iron-flavored, turbid tap water. We used one of these as target practice once. We used one. We used one. Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years. But that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Poor old lizard. You've seen better days, haven't you? Mort, you scabious beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> Did that ever bother you, Morty? Listen, sonny boy. Go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Jesse is a good boy, Sonny. And he's good to me, believe me. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster, eh? It's still, Sonny, I have no one else. Do you understand that, don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> but neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. Tell me, sonny boy, How's Molly and the little chicky? You really know how to hurt a guy. Is something wrong? They no longer live with me, Mort. For a few years now. And to be honest, we're not really in touch. I'm sorry, pal. I didn't want to reopen old wounds. It's all right, Morty. Let's drop it. Everything all right, Lizard Wizard? Yeah, it will be as soon as I'm out of here. Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. He's not a bad boy, by the way. He's not a bad... Holy wild ones, look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy, as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, 
This son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? I'm still a cop for another 121 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion, thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco. But we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. How are the pups? They're real monsters. Life's a living hell. But it'd be even worse without them, you know? Yeah, you're telling me. Oh, right. Sorry. And how's life without the chicken police? Unfortunately, the worst half is still here, but it's good. It's so uneventful. What a coincidence. Want me to make a scene? <laughs> no, I'm fine without it, really. Listen, Bosco, do you need this mess with Mort? <sighs> like hell I do. Well, what can I do when he's almost beat a fucking giraffe to death? A giraffe? Never mind, it's New Year's Eve. There's a brawl like this in every joint of the city, and you know that. He's just a loser, and also blind. Maybe someone just stuck that broken mug in his hand. <laughs> you know that's not what happened. Of course I know. <sighs> all right, I'll let him go. We don't need him yelling in here all night. I'll write the report and throw him out. But he'd better not end up back in here again tonight. I'll have a talk with him. Keep up the good work. You're a good boy, Bosco. <laughs> Cluck off, Sonny. Keep up the good work. <laughs> One of Blood Boil's favorites. Mainly because he's a dog, of course. One of Blood Boil. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. Officer... I'm really not in the mood to meet Deputy Malloy or any of my ex-colleagues from the Predatory Division. I'm not here for this. I just need to grab Marty and get the hell out. Just sign any bullshit testimony they shove in your face, and you're free to go. Bosco also wants to get through with it, just like you. Thanks, Sonny. Much obliged. You owe me another one, old man. And I won't forget it. You can count on me, Sonny boy. I'll help if I can. Just sign any bullshit testimony they shove in your face. Thanks. You all... You can count... This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for it. Hello, Cassandra. I hope we'll meet again. Oh god, I'm starting to sound like Marty. That little note down there. What can I say? 
Classic Monty. That little note that... Her Majesty Big Bertha, or rather Big Bertha II, because there was one before her, a sawed-off little broad, but we lost her in a swamp. Marty cried for a week, but once he saw this giant lady here, the balance of the universe was restored. I still remember her kiss. What can I say? It's the experience of a lifetime. I still re I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. Linda. Or maybe Layla. Can't remember. Fortunately, I had the displeasure of meeting her only a couple of times on duty. She bites. Just like the women Marty loves. Linda. I know her well. Marty calls her Susie, and I have to say, this little she-devil pulled us out of many tough situations over the years. Marty has a dozen guns, but Susie's one of his favorites. He got her from a fish we rescued from muddy waters together. Those were the days. Claudia, tiny, dark, and angry, and hits you where it hurts the most. Marty only uses her in very dark cases, and on those nights she almost always takes a life, or maybe two. I was just about to go when you came in, so if you want shooting practice, maybe turn on the lights first. You're right. I'm gonna do that. Marty looks good. Big and loud and angry as always. Marty looks good. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. What, are you lost? This is the PD building, you know? Got this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Uh, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, okay? That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. Yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case, we'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny, stop it right there. I'm in. That's... that's it? Ugh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid, reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so, tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Ah, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. <sighs> okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Ah, <sighs> all right, Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Hey, Marty, what about Laura? How come she didn't eat you yet? Yeah, very funny. We're good, by the way. Mostly. As good as we can be after all these years. Glad to hear it. She asks a lot about you. Really? Yeah. 
She always hated you for getting me into trouble all the time. Understandable. But she also felt sorry for you. Ah, oh, well, thanks. That's uh, much better. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, she loved the chicken police, Marty, better than this one. Well, I think I'll take that as a compliment. Whatever, Sonny. So, uh, Sonny, you still limping? The pellets tore my right hip to pieces. So, yes, the doctor says I'll limp forever. Ah, good to hear that. Fuck off. Can we go finally, or are you waiting for a big warm hug? Let's get out of here before I get detained for gutting you. Ah, lovely and peaceful as always. Welcome back, boss bird. Can we go find? Let's get out. Ah, lo Bye, Mandy. See you soon. Yeah, <laughs> you've named the poster girl. You a bit lonely these days? You're one to talk. I've heard you muttering to her. What, me? To a poster? <laughs> Don't be silly. You know, the broad in the picture really was a cop. Was? Why? What happened to her? She shot herself while cleaning her gun. What a waste. You know, the broad in the... Was. She shot... What a waste. You know, the broad... Was. She... What a waste. I was just about to go when you... You're right. I'm... Hey, there were four weapons here. Where are the others? You're not bringing them with you, I hope. Oh, well, we're going to a bar, aren't we? Yeah, that's the point. And? What? A buffalo killer and two handguns? We're only there to sniff around, not start a goddamn war. Ah, war, bar, what's the difference? And it's frickin' New Year's Eve, right? Of all that's furry, you know what? I don't even care. That's the spirit. Seriously, Marty, why the hell do you need three guns? Who said I have just three? Serious. Who said I have?
Go find, let's get out of here. Ah. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. Oh yeah, like last time? Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little, and it smells too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Ah, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what? <laughs> Just kidding, sort of. Did you ever notice how much bigger the lion and the fox are than the other animals? You know, maybe all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Huh. So that's why our king's a fox and not a sheep or a bird, right? It's maybe a little late, but you're starting to get it, detective. Where are the insects, anyway? And the reptiles? Did you ever think about that? Many times. I think they didn't fit the idyllic image, so they've been left out. Simple as that. Uh, that says a lot about this city. It says everything, Monty. All it takes is one look, and my comb starts to tingle, which never means anything good. All it takes... Do you remember when they changed the old coat of arms and we used it as target practice? I remember Blood Boil catching us and almost suspending us because of your stupid shit. My stupid shit? I remember it was your idea. And you were drunk as hell. Yeah, and I remember you... You... you oh, shut the fuck up. You know, when I was a boy, those words used to enchant me. I thought you became a cop for the guns. Well, yeah, that was the main reason. This was the other. This city's lucky to have you, Marty. Yeah, isn't it? And how lucky are you, too? Join the force, protect the crown, serve the people. Get bribed, get beaten by a hooker, get fat. Nice words, nice promises. Nice bullshit. We used one of these as target practice. We used... Do you still drink that garbage? Hey, it's not garbage, okay? Allegedly, they've used it as medicine once, if you must know. Yeah, once they used to heal with bloodletting too, Marty. Don't believe everything that's on these labels. You're not a little chick anymore. Okay, Dad. This is the future. It is? Kuh. I'd rather drink the past then. Huh, you mean a 12-year-old bourbon? Hey, I'm not, uh, but yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Don't drink that shit, Marty, it's bad for your health. Sonny, you are bad for my health. Don't drink that, Sonny, you are... <sighs> Maybe next time, I'm not... left, 
When Blood Boil kicked me out, you mean? Yeah. So that affected even her. Why? Because she can do her job in peace finally? <laughs> you know that's not what I mean. Yeah, I guess. An angel in the form of a fragile little bird. Yep, that's her. An angel. Yep, that. We're leaving, sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Monica. Remember that invitation from the other day? Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, Marty. I'd love to, but I've got a lot of work to do. You know how it is. Please tell your sweetheart that I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I understand. No problem. We'll meet at the annual party anyway, right? Yeah, that's true. I'll tell Laura. I have a strange feeling that we'll meet again tonight. Strange. I have that feeling too. That's weird. I was just thinking the same thing. I have a strange... Stra That's weird. Oof, I gotta say, good old Bosco looks like shit. Yeah, like a beaten dog. While you, on the other hand, you just got older. Way older. Shut the clock up, Marty. Maybe he's worth asking a thing or two. Yeah, that flea bag can be useful. Maybe he's worth asking. Yeah. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. I hate his kind anyway. Well, because he's a reptile? No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. No, oh, yeah, that's true. And you? Are you letting off some steam? Something like that. We'll go and check out some seedy joint. We're cops after all, ain't we? And this is still Clawville. That's true, pal. Protect and serve. Yeesh, get a room, you two. Ah, shut up, Marty. I see blood boils here. We're in deep guano for sure, Marty. Isn't it your lucky day, huh? Are you thinking about some stupid shit again? We? Excuse me, sir, but what do you mean? Great wilderness, just keep a low profile, will ya? It's New Year's Eve. We have enough dangerous lunatics running around already. Don't worry, Chow Hound. We know what we're doing. Yeah, of course you do. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, listen, Bosco. I wanted to ask you this for so long. Can I pet you just a little? One more word, and I'll bite off your arm. Oh, hey, hey, easy. I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm really going to miss this when I retire. Hey, listen, Bosco. One more oh, hey. Guys, I'm... What have you heard about the hop dog? Is it still standing? Yeah, it is. But I don't frequent that neighborhood. You shouldn't either. Things have escalated there recently. What do you know about Ibn Wessler? What's the old rat been up to lately? They say he's keeping a pretty low profile these days. But he's been seen in the company of the Attorney General. Attorney General Hamtaro, eh? Oh, that's interesting. Thanks. Why are you so interested in that rat? If you want another hole in your comb, I could help you too, you know. It's just professional curiosity. Yeah, of course. And I'm a fluffy little Labrador. Whoa, 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 you forgot to mention this nugget about the case, Sonny? Ibn clucking Wessler? What the hell did you get into? Far as I remember, you didn't let me tell you in the first place. Well, you're in now. No way back. 
You're a piece of shit, Sonny, you hear me? What's this all about? Easy, chicken. I'll tell you everything soon enough. Let's just get the hell out of here first. <sighs> if I already told you it's a pleasure working with you again? No, but that's always good to hear, partner. Yeah, cluck off. What have you heard about- Yeah, it is. But I don't frequent that neighborhood. You shouldn't either. Why is it so quiet in here? Shouldn't it be a madhouse by now? The midnight madness is yet to come, Sonny. Just wait for it. My time's too valuable for that, pal. And you're trespassing. Rules of suspension, remember? I can see you're up to no good. Who, us? Ridiculous. <laughs> if you say so. But I advise you to keep it low. Especially you, Sonny. How many days do you have until retirement? 121. 120 soon. Don't be a knucklehead and get yourself fired. Thanks for your eternal wisdom, Bosco. I'm definitely coming to you again next time. Maybe he's worth asking a thing or two. Yeah, that flea bag can be... Look at these two simpletons. <laughs> they don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild god's sake, don't dare tell them. I already tried, but nothing happened. Figures. The chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood, but he never is, actually. Honestly, I have a really bad feeling about this. Honestly, What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, oh it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss, I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. Honestly? What is it, Santino? No, nothing, sir. And you need something, Martin? No, sir. Then get out of my sight, birds. What is it, sir? No, nothing. And you? No, sir. Then get out of... Hey, listen. One more. Oh. Guys, I'm... Re we have no business. Looking at these two, I think our world is ready to be annihilated. Looking at these two... Hello, gents. Everything all right? Uh, everything's just fine, Sonny. Well, look, the chick police are together again. What a time to be alive. Am I right, Roy's? <laughs> You're right, Foss. Hey, that reminds me. 
Look at what I found under my coat. It's Her Majesty Big Bertha in the flesh. Whoa, 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 don't shoot. We were just joking, okay? We don't want any trouble. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking too. <laughs> I'll never get bored with these two. They're so cute. I wonder why they thought you would shoot at another cop. Hey, it's just happened once, okay? Am I right, boys? You, 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 you're right, Marty. Yeah. We all know it was an accident. See? You know, this says a lot about this city and the police in general. Yeah, maybe Blood Boil meant it as a deterrent, but it sure sends a different message to the common man. Yeah, he was born into the wrong age. He belongs to a time when everything was decided by who's louder and bites harder. You're probably right. In an age like that, we wouldn't be alive anymore, pal. A bullet is a bullet. Doesn't matter if the gun's in the hands of a sheep or a lion. A bullet... If it were up to him, only dogs would work at the PD. The racist old bastard. Blood Boil is an asshole. We couldn't dress up that fact even if he wanted to. His only merit is that he's damn good at what he does. True. I guess he is keeping this whole institution together. When he retires... Bam. The whole house of cards will crumble. If it had been up to him, Blood Boil would have made Clawville a police state a long time ago. That crest reminds me. Do you have your badge? Yeah. You know, boss, unlike you, I'm on duty. Good, we may need it. I have my own, too. For safety. But Blood Boil took yours, didn't he? So? Ah, I get it. My beak is closed. You're a lion, Sonny, not a rooster. Remember, you're a lion, Sonny. How many days did we have our first squad car? About three, I think, before we crashed into that tank of acid. We? <laughs> you crashed it. Don't blame it on me, Marty. I was unconscious, if I remember correctly. And that's your problem, boss. You should be more careful with low-hanging concrete blocks next time. Yeah, I've been paying attention to that ever since. Do you remember? The car was melted and blown to pieces. Blood Boil was furious. Ah, good times. Time sure makes memories golden, huh? Luckily, back then, he didn't have the power to fire us. Sometimes... I miss the old times, when everything was so simple. I have a strange feel- Stray, that's weird. I
The hop dog was like the last warning. You can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered down coffee. The cold light called me, but I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all going to be pancakes, kept together by cold syrup. Marty's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Ah, oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? Are you sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. The name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? A natural born genius. <laughs> yeah, right. That sign gives me the creeps. I'm not surprised. That sign... I'm not surprised. There used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick. And the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. But at least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know. But its aroma is unbeatable. Town always gives me the creeps. Hey, don't call it that. It's not okay. Whatever happened here, it's still the cobbler district. Old memories? We used to live here a while with my mother. There used to be a small ice cream shop around here and a baker. The whole area smelled like fresh bread. It smelled like home. How could we turn it into a slum? Good question. Let's pray to the gods we'll never have to work here again. Do you remember that case? With that fly called Novak? <laughs> Great wild ones. How could I ever forget that? Let's pray to the gods. <laughs> Great. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. Trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Maybe he can't understand what we're saying. Or he just doesn't want to talk to us. Which I can understand considering how most of the animals treat these poor bastards. Indifference is almost as harmful, Sonny. You think I'm indifferent about the insect issue? I didn't say that, boss. I'm not indifferent. I just think we... Well, we've simply gone too far to even make it right. It's never too late to change, Sonny. I hope you're right. Ah, is that the Chitin Blues? I think so. It has a unique sound to it, that's for sure. I'd like to visit the Hive again, when things lighten up a little. Yeah, and when they welcome cops again. Yeah, right. Ah, is that the cop? I think I'd like... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, pal. Can you hear me? Is 
he deaf? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. Ah, uh, poor bug eyes. At least he's playing music. I mean, he's doing something. Most of the destitute take up drinking or drugs. Or worse. Mm. You know about the light. You mean the light the insects believe in? Yeah, their afterlife. If they want to go into the light, they set themselves on fire. Yeah, I've heard that. Maybe it's not a bad way to go. That depends on your point of view. Ah, uh, poor bug eyes. At least he... Mm. You mean the... Yeah. Yeah, that depends... Could this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. It's sad that everything's rotting away. It is, especially a beauty like that. Yeah. Once this broken down old car was new and shiny. Am I a broken down old car too? Of all that's furry. Is this still a thing? The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living? I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. I don't think I want to know. But you're still going to tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? They pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown. They sell them as gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. Zip is a tricky little son of a bitch. He always has been. But seeing this, I didn't know him to be like this. Me neither, Marty. But maybe this neighborhood changed him. Or the city. Yeah, maybe. This makes the bile rise in my wattle. Yeah, me too. This makes the bile... Yeah. Ugh, the place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yep, the guy's middle name is Bad Luck. That's for sure. And voila, the master himself. What a finch. Ah, uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. In another life, I'd love to be a rock star. <laughs> You're already one, Marty. For me. Ah, thanks, boss. Kids these days and their crazy music. What would old M.B. Davis say to this garbage? Kids these days. Still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat, I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can, that's the point. Wild gods, Marty, stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny. And if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat, but don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day.
Ooh, a nice pancake with hemp seed, chocolate, and black onions? I'd rather have somebody pull my beak off. Ah, you used to be more daring. Yeah, and my back didn't hurt either. Furry heavens, it's depressing being around you, boss bird. Ooh, maybe a peanut souffle with faux meat. Oh, stop it, Marty, before I get sick. Ugh, you're just a boring old man. I'd rather be boring than dead. I wouldn't eat here if my life depended on it. of my day. Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. As always. Ah, this will do. Until tomorrow morning, at least. That's right. Someone once said that everything's backwards in Clawville. The beer's always warm and the coffee's always cold. Well, I guess I'm starting to understand what he meant. What insight. Wise words, pal. Wise words. Well, that's a good question, pal. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. Oh yeah, I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole place. He had to, we didn't leave much of it standing. If I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. What's that smell? You know, I don't wanna know. Zip once had Marty do the dishes because he tried to take off without paying. That was one of the best days of my life. Zip once... He sure didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. You think he might know something about the case? 
He knows almost everybody in this city. At least he used to once. Let's see if he still does. When I first arrested him, he was barely 14 years old. I was a rookie cop. Who would have thought we'd end up like this? Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? We haven't been anywhere yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? That depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell! Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not going to trash my joint this time, eh? You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos, and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kind of weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a favor, like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. That Natasha's a mysterious woman, a real cursed jewel if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice, makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam, she got the whole club, just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name The Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty. You sure talk a lot. And maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, right? Aw, oh, come on, Zippy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time. And you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then, haven't you? Yeah, right. How lucky am I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. What's this no insects allowed shit? You're not like that. What do you think? If I let one in, all of them will follow. And then I can forget my regular clientele for good. What clientele? There's no one here. That's it. Would you take even that away from me? What's this no in- What do you think? If I let one in, all of them will follow. What clientele? There That's it. Have you ever been to that place? Of course. 
this a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. But then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. I've got to say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. Yeah, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> watch your beak. So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. Mind your tongue, for a ball. <laughs> so, Ibn's gone insane. Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman isn't, huh? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got the most influential gangster of the city wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little furball. How dangerous do you think she is? Hmm. You didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> you will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple, yeah. But somehow this suits you. You know what? Your mother's a goat. When I first arrested him, he was... What's this? No in... What are you... What, Clark? That's it! Condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Ah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah. That. Now, that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Yeah, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. Mm, after you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window. Sure, just do it quietly. You're getting older, Marty. You look like shit. Ah, gee, thanks. I thought angels don't grow old. Ah, leave it, will ya? Sure. Boo hoo. Huh? <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? I was just thinking about. Ah, oh, what the hell are we looking for, anyway? Jeez, old bird. You want to look around, remember? No, I mean figuratively. Oh, well then it's a good question. 
Hanged if I know. Uh, thanks for your help, partner. It's a pleasure to work with you again. Ah, don't mention it, boss. Why are you staring at me? I was just... Jeez, old... No, I mean... Oh. Uh, th ah, don't mention... When was the last time I was here? I don't know. Years ago. When Molly left. Whew, that was a... a wild night. Yeah. You know, Sonny, you can call me. Not just when you want to investigate some shady case from a shady dame and you need a big meat shield to cover your ass. Times have changed, Marty. And I don't call anyone. All right, all right, Boss Bird. Whatever you say. So, am I staring quietly enough? Well, the floor's creaking a bit when you shift your weight, so, uh... You're an asshole. You have what we came for? I just want to look around a little. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, Sonny. Then grab your map and let's hit the road. You have what we... I just want... All right, Sonny. Have you been there before? Uh, never. You know, it's not my style. It's too fancy for me. I'm more like the smoky, smelly, ramshack a little joint type. Yeah, same here. But we're not gonna mingle like this, right? We're not searching for a tailor on New Year's Eve, okay? We'll go as we are. That'll be exciting. Let's just stay out of trouble, okay? What trouble? That's the spirit. So she just turned up with a message on this flyer, and you fell for it? Maybe I was bored. Or maybe there's more to this thing than meets the eye. Yeah, there's always more. Maybe I just wanted to meet you, for old time's sake. That's not funny. <laughs> I've never had a good sense of humor. You know that better than anyone. That's for sure. So the Czar Club, huh? My city's on fire, sounds good. But that's all? It's kinda weak for a clue. It's not a clue, it's just a guide. By the way, it's New Year's Eve. We deserve some fun, right? Well, that's true. But it's never that easy with you, Boss Bird. There's something you're not telling me, right? Nothing important, Marty. Ah, uh, yeah, if you say so. Oh, hi, Mr. Sinclair. How are we? Sinclair is doing fine, thanks. Anyway, you still talk to your guns? <laughs> yeah, and so what? Other animals talk to their plants. Crazy, isn't it? At least a gun has a soul, and it's useful. I can't believe you're allowed to walk around freely, Birdie. Oh, if you only knew what I'm packing right now. I don't want to know what's under your feathers, Marty. It would be best to board it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may be run down, but somehow I still feel like it's honest. Sure. You could live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place, too. Has a similar stink. Believe me, Marty, I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised? When was the last time you've slept in your bedroom? I don't know. I'm not sure I'd even recognize it anymore. Ah, uh, you're hopeless, boss. I guess you're right. Nothing interesting in there. But if there is, it'll remain hidden for all eternity. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already started working on my will, but I realize I'd have to leave everything to you, so cluck that. Huh, <laughs> pity. I've always wanted a chicken coop smelling like old socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty. Maybe I'm really gonna write that novel. I suppose two shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what this Natasha woman really wants. I'm gonna clean up here one day. Yeah, and one day the sun's gonna explode too. 
I'm going to... My wife took all the good ones. She knew they'd only gathered dust here, and she was right. My wife took all... You know, this city's outgrown us. Why do you say that? Well, don't you feel it? The whole place squeezing you. The polluted air, the sirens, and the smell of cordite. Ah, don't be such a drama queen. It's not the world that's changed, it's us. Clawville's Clawville. We're just getting older. No, there really is something. You know the feeling of foreboding, of something wrong, of something bad on the horizon. Ah, uh, you're screwing my mood. Yeah, but I'm not sorry. No shit. A long time ago, when an animal was starving, they bit someone. Worst case, they killed or ate them. That's being a predator, isn't it? And that was our job. Uh, yeah? What are you getting at? Well, it's not the case anymore. Animals are eating each other out of pleasure. It's a poison. They're losing their minds. Ah, Sonny. We just got old. That's all. It's not that simple, Marty. If you say so. Of all that's furry. Just a bunch of useless crap in there. Ah, man. I can't imagine how you feel. The only good thing you ever had, huh? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> sure. She was the one, right? I mean, the one. So? Marty, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear a single word. Are we clear? Oh, geez, calm down, boss bird. She was the one. Marty. Oh, gee. Hmm, I didn't know you used to be a kindergarten teacher. But leather? It's history, so back off. I'm touched by the trust you have in me, boss bird. There are things better left undisturbed, okay? Yeah, got it. You weren't an orphan, were you? That would explain a lot, you know? You've never talked about your family. No, I wasn't an orphan. My parents are dead, but most of my family still lives somewhere in Averia. Then what the hell still keeps you in Clawville? There's nothing remotely good here, especially nothing as good as a family. I had my own family, Marty. Not anymore. And Clawville is my home, like it or not. Because that's what I deserve. Ooh, okay, I get it. You weren't an orphan, were you? No. Then what? I had... Ooh. Who's that shaggy creature? That's M.B. Davis, you bird brain. Politician? Am I gonna have to smash your beak? Seriously, I don't know who the hell he is. <sighs> I know. He's the guy who smuggled cocaine in his prosthetic leg, isn't he? One more word about Mr. Davis, Marty, and I'm gonna wring that ham-sized neck of yours. <laughs> you don't have to cock a doodle immediately, you know. I'm just clucking with you, okay? I know. One <laughs> You don't... <laughs> the old days. You know, I miss him sometimes. What, the hype? Us as celebrity cops? <laughs> nah, the work, the buzz. The phone ringing at 4 a.m. and knowing if you pick it up, you'll be dragged into something terrible, because that's your job. And of course, you pick it up every cluck in time. I'm not sure it's healthy to enjoy that. Hey, no healthy animal becomes a cop in Clawville. Yeah, true. It's like it wasn't even us. You're not becoming sentimental, are you? No, I mean, we were suckers for sure, but looking back now, I feel at least we knew what we wanted. I still know what I want. And what do you want, Marty? A lovely wedding and a long honeymoon. Laura deserves it. And I also want Blood Boil's job. A rooster's never gonna be police chief, Marty. Not at this time. 
Not in this place. Uh, thanks for putting me in my place all the time. I hope you don't call me again for another five years. It's like it wasn't even us. So this is them. Yeah, the wild gentlemen. They were role models when I was a kid. Well, you must have been a weird kid. Which ain't surprising. My idols were the White Wolf and Super Squirrel. The White Wolf, eh? <laughs> Explains a lot. You know, when I was back in Averia, Clawville and the whole let's live together in peace bullshit seemed like an unattainable dream. Those guys made it happen. The city rose from the ashes of the Great Fire. Yeah, but look at it now. And what would have become of you if you hadn't ended up in Clawville? Maybe you'd even be... happy? Perhaps. Those guys were something, huh? Nowadays, I don't know what they were, or what I believed they were. Say, Bosbert, do you read poetry now? No. Why? Because you're going nuts. Well, thanks. Those guys were something. I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm gonna end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Maybe in another lifetime, old bird. Maybe in another...